I spoke to you a couple of days ago. Morning, I think it's fair to say that you were a bit restrained in, uh, in holding on to your jubilation. So now you can let it all go. How's it feeling? Oh, seriously good. Seriously good. We were really pleased to be here last night to share in the announcement, but also to see how much it means to Matilda's past and present and all of those who mm. um, have been participating in pulling a really, really good bid together. How does this compare to all of the other great international sporting tournaments that Australia has held? Well, it's right up there. It's the biggest women's sporting event in the world. Uh, it's going to have the eyes of the football world on Australia in just three years' time. Uh, and it's, it's a wonderful thing for our two countries, for Australia and for New Zealand. Uh, 13 um, stadiums across the two nations and, and in, in fact here in Australia spreading the uh, Women's World Cup to all states uh, and into regional areas. So it's, it's, a, it's a huge event and uh, it'll mean a lot to the country. How much of an effect do you think this will have on our economy? Well, it's calculated to have uh, a value in the hundreds of millions in drawing people, viewers, uh, to Australia and to the economy. It'll have a huge impact, I think, on participation in women's sport more generally, but particularly into women's football, which is fantastic. Uh, and uh, for Australian young girls to be able to see their idols in the Matildas running around on home soil, playing the very best of the best, in a global competition, I think is just fantastic. It's not that far away. It's only a couple of years away that this uh, event will be held. Is all of the infrastructure, is, is it already in place? Are, are we using all existing stadiums, all existing transport systems, etc.? so there's going to be nothing new? All the infrastructure is there. There's the new stadium here in Sydney that's being built that will be ready in time for the event. But uh, it's all utilising existing infrastructure and that's one of the strengths of the bid and that showed through in the judging of the bid book. And uh, it was one of the strengths of our bid uh, more broadly in the context of its comparison with the others. We were the top rag bid uh, on the assessment of the bidding process and uh, really delighted that that showed through in the voting last night. Is it worth noting and is it worth remembering that our great friends England didn't vote for us? They supported the Colombian bid? Well, it's certainly going to make any Australia-England uh, competition and our victory in those competitions all the sweeter. So yeah. I think we'll just all carry that in the back of our memories uh, as we go forward. So it's always great to beat uh, England in any contest and I think it'll make it just a bit more sweeter now. How much sleep have you had, Minister? Not a lot, but I've got to say uh, it's the best kind of bleary-eyed to be here last night to see the reaction of the players present and past uh, was just fantastic and you can see how much it means to them to be able to host an event such as this, how important it is to them uh, and I think that will flow out into the general community more broadly and particularly those who have been integrally involved in the development of the bid both from Australia and for New Zealand. It was a, a wonderful night to be a part of, very, very exciting and congratulations to FFA and New Zealand football on pulling it together. They've done a brilliant job. The uh, Prime Minister interrupted our uh, conversation the other day. Minister, have you spoken to him in the last few hours about it and what's he said? We've had some messages backwards and forwards, but I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet, but I know he's pretty delighted. He uh, provided a video uh, clip for the presentation to the FIFA Commission last night, so he's been involved. He'll be really pleased. This is a big deal uh, and a big thing for Australia.